Hello and bon dia, dear colleagues in Brazil. My name is Carsten Schroeder, and my presentation today is about Mycoplasma bovis disease, diagnosis and control. And it's a joint effort with the help of my uh, colleague Stephen, uh, Darland, Oliver, Claudia, and my friend Mariangela from Brazil. In this presentation, I will quickly introduce Indical Bioscience to you and then uh, present on Mycoplasma bovis, the occurrence, the pathogenesis, transmission, and the disease it's causing. There will be a special focus on diagnostics and disease management and control, followed by some conclusions. For those of you who haven't heard about Indical Bioscience yet, the company has more than 20, actually 25 years of experience in the veterinary diagnostic business. It was uh, formerly Kyagen's veterinary animal health business, which makes us truly a leader for molecular diagnostics for veterinary applications. And we are especially focused on ELISA and PCR test solutions for livestock and poultry. Mycoplasma bovis is an important pathogen of cattle, causing significant the impacts on cattle health and cattle farming economy. It occurs worldwide. And as you can see on the map on the right hand side, starting from the 1960s over the years with the latest uh, detection in 2017 in New Zealand was uh, introduced and detected all over the world. It's causing increasingly problems in Germany, Austria, Denmark, Israel, and lately New Zealand with more severe outbreaks recently. And it seems to be more prevalent in large cattle and dairy farms and often affects intensive beef production, for example, in feedlot and milk production in high yielding herds. Mycoplasma bovis is one of 126 species of the genus Mycoplasma. It belongs to the smallest living cells and is un of anaerobic nature, does not contain a cell wall. It is resistant to penicillin and other beta lactam antibiotics. And the antigen variation is typical, which allows them to escape the host immune response. The respiratory tract and the other are the most important sites for colonization and shedding of M. bovis, and this shedding can be intermittent and for months and years. And it's causing disease in calves and cows, and uh, about this I will tell you more in the next slides. It is very important to understand that both the cow and the calf are involved in the transmission of uh, Mycoplasma bovis, and it's an infectious cycle with often the cow getting in, uh, infected via the respiratory system, first uh, manifestation in the lungs on a respiratory tract, from there homogeneous spread uh, through the body with a second location manifestation in the other. And from there, calves get infected via oral or nasal uptake. But the story is even more complex, as I will show you in the next upcoming slides. As shown here in the line number one, infection transmission and infection can occur via direct contact between animals. It can be done by feeding mycoplasma positive milk or colostrum, like indicated here in arrow number two. It can occur via contaminated milk feeding equipment, for example, milk suckler, sucklers uh, from cows to calf. And it can occur via new calves purchased into the herds. So several ways of introduction and transmission with, uh, again, both calf and cows being involved. In calves and young stock, Mycoplasma bovis infection is causing bovine respiratory disease with fever, apathy, chronic coughing, increased breathing frequency, dyspnea, nasal discharge, 
commonly interstitial bronchopneumonia, polyarthritis, tendosynovitis, swollen joints, lameness, uh, mostly in young uh, young calves. It also can cause otitis media with ear scratching, head tilt, poor rain discharge from the ears, and in rare cases, it can cause keratoconjunctivitis. Mycoplasma infection in uh, cows is mostly characterized by mastitis, mycoplasma mastitis, again, mostly by mycoplasma bovis, but also mycoplasma bovigenitalium or mycoplasma californicum can cause uh, mycoplasma mastitis in cows. It's characterized by sandy, brownish, watery milk. In the image on the right hand side, it is the tube in the middle but uh, the milk of um, um, bovis positive uh, cows can also almost look normal like on the tube on the left hand side and can cause also severe mastitis including even blood in the sample the uh, tube on the right hand side uh, mycoplasma mastitis often characterized by a potential spread between the quarters in it, it can cause and lead to severe damage to the other also uh, possible in cows, pneumonia, arthritis, keratoconjunctivitis, otitis media, and genital uh, disorders caused by mycoplasma bovis. For mycoplasma bovis diagnostics, there are ELISAs out there for M. bovis antibody detection. But have in mind, this does not detect the embovis itself or the shadows. It's just an indirect detection of the immune response to embovis. Uh, those ELISAs allow an indication of for the, about the herd situation for embovis in, let's say, your own herd or the herd which is the source for calves to be purchased in. Uh, there are often problems, especially if the serum prevalence in a country or region is high, which is pretty often the case. More commonly used is uh, the direct detection by PCR, to less extent uh, culture for embovis, and uh, deep nasopharyngeal swaps can be collected and can be uh, tested more reliable but more difficult to obtain are bronchial lavage, obviously from uh, only post-mortem lung tissue for testing, and also it's difficult to collect synovial fluid from the from the joints. Therefore, uh, pretty common are also swaps, environmental samples, and surfaces, like here indicated by uh, by E in yellow and uh, very commonly perform testing on milk and bulk milk, which means milk pools. As mentioned before, in adult cows, especially the other is a place, a location for manifestation and the source of shedding and spreading of M. bovis inside the herd, especially also to the young cows, and therefore Testing milk, but also bulk milk, is uh, commonly performed, and I will tell you more in the upcoming slides. So, why is testing milk for, for contagious mastitis, including mycoplasma bovis mastitis, by real time PCR commonly performed? Well, it allows a fast, sensitive diagnostics. So, uh, results are within a day about four hours uh, from sample to result, so very straightforward, very fast, uh, can be done in the lab. It detects bacteria which are difficult to grow, especially mycoplasma, mycoplasma bovis. Just a very few laboratories successfully can grow mycoplasma, but detection using good PCR systems is actually uh, pretty easy. The PCR, real-time PCR, allows a quantitative analysis based on a CT value. Uh, modern diagnostic systems uh, are out there which allow a multiplexing of embovis uh, PCR together with staph aureus and streptococcus uberus in the same run at the same time. 
and milk and pooled milk samples which are uh, you which are containing preservative like sodium acid or promopol which are collected for disease control programs like e.g. brucellosis testing those can be used and uh, by the way those samples which are stabilized this allows also better results compared to those samples which are used for culture and are cannot be stabilized uh, therefore and the detection of other pathogens from milk, for example, Q fever or BVDV using the same PCR technology, using other PCR kits, for example, from our company is possible. Indical bioscience is specialized in detection of infectious diseases in poultry and livestock. And therefore, we have developed our Bactotype mastitis test system, which combines the optimized uh, extraction of nucleic acids from milk, sam from milk samples in combination with multiplex PCR modules for detection of uh, mast mastitis. So for those customers who are especially interested in the embovis uh, mastitis and embovis detection, they are using the HP3 PCR kit from Indical, which allows the identification of embovis in combination with the strep agalactiae and the Staphylococcus aureus in the same run for the same price. And if veterinarians are interested in mycoplasma other than mycoplasma above us, we recommend the Bactotype HP2 PCR module, which allows detection of mycoplasma spec, which is mastitis causing mycoplasma, and it differentiates mycoplasma above us in the same run, and it has an add on the Streptococcus agalactiae in the same module and if uh, veterinarians are interested to combine this testing uh, because they want to know for about other mastitis causing bacteria we recommend the uh, bactotype mastitis environmental module which allows detection for e coli strep uberus streptococcus discalactiae or tuporella puogenes Again, this can be combined with the HP2 plus or the HP3, and this allows uh, veterinarians uh, to, to understand what's going on regarding mastitis in the herd with uh, a special focus on mycoplasma bovis mastitis. This slide contains some data about the Bactotype mastitis test system performance. It's a case study from a mycoplasma bovis outbreak in a dairy herd which happened actually not far from where I live. And the veterinarian there is a friend of mine. And he, at a certain point, was suspicious in a, uh, about a dairy herd, a high-performing dairy herd, 600 cattle heads, which uh, all of a sudden showed uh, signs of clinical mastitis. And he was sus suspicious it could be embovis. In order to be cost efficient, what we did, we created pools of 10 milk samples. So uh, reducing the 600 uh, cows to 60 pools of 10 animals each. And we analyzed those uh, samples with the Bactotype mastitis HP2 PCR kit, HP2 plus PCR kit. Remember, it contains detection, includes detection of mycoplasma species, embovis, and strep agalactiae. The results of uh, M, uh, mycoplasma species and mycoplasma bovis are indicated in this graph here on the right hand side. Uh, I think most of you are familiar with PCR. The PCR, real time PCR, runs 40 cycles, and the lower the CT value, the stronger the uh, the stronger the result is what you can see is that we found pools remember pools of 10 which were very strong positive ct values of 15 16 are really strong positive even 20 23 24 was all very many very strong positive uh, samples in, uh, in 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 this group and then we had also some samples around ct30 and up to uh, very weak positive samples 
uh, in up to up to CT38. So the whole range, including uh, quite some very strong positive uh, positive results, and also what we saw was that the mycoplasma species and the mycoplasma bovis was very similar, which is, is not a big surprise since uh, all these uh, samples which re reacted at mycoplasma species were actually mycoplasma posi positives. So the conclusion was mycoplasma bovis was the cause of this outbreak and again some very strong positive samples among those. In Germany, surveillance of infectious diseases in uh, dairy herds is often performed on milk, bulk milk samples of 50 cattle heads. And we wanted to know uh, about the performance of our bactotype mastitis kit, uh, si mimicking here pool milk sizes of 50. And what we did, we picked samples, milk samples, positive for M bovis and we diluted those, diluted those in negative milk samples uh, from 1 to 10 up to 1 to 50. And what we did, we picked a, a strong positive sample with a CT22 or let's say 22.99. We picked a medium positive sample with CT28 and we picked a weak positive sample. And we did these dilution studies, like I said, from 1 to 10 up to 1 to 50. And as you can see, the strong positive uh, sample uh, diluted in 1 to 50 in a negative uh, negative milk sample, so the one pool of 1 to 50 was still clearly actually even strong positive. No problem to detect those in a pool of 50. Then even the weak positive one, this one uh, diluted in 1 to 50 was, uh, sorry, the medium positive one diluted in 1 in 50 in negative mil uh, yielded a CT35, so was still clearly detected positive. And also, let's say, not a big surprise when we used a very weak positive sample and diluted this further in negative samples, then uh, this turned negative. So the conclusion here, there is a, a detection limit uh, of this assay, but especially looking at the previous data, knowing that in embovis positive herds, there are always some medium and strong positive samples. So it should be pretty easy to do the surveillance based on pool and bulk milk samples of 50. Since the mycoplasma surveillance is often combined with testing for the other contagious causes of mastitis, we repeated our experiment here for Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus agalactiae. Again, the same approach. We picked a strong positive one, a medium, medium positive one, and a weak positive sample, did the dilution between 1 and 10 and 1 to 50, in negative milk samples. And also here you could see between the strong and the uh, uh, strong positive one, when we further diluted this, uh, there was the CT value was uh, a little bit less, but still clearly detected positive, but also our medium positive one. And in this case, even our weak positive one, even if it was here at the detection limit, it was still positive. So the same picture for Staph aureus and actually also for Strep agalactiae, looking here at this very strong positive one, which apparently occur. So no problem at all to detect those in 1 to 50. Um, the medium one was uh, also detected in here. In this case, even the weak positive one was still detectable. Therefore, the uh, conclusion was uh, that uh, surveillance of contagious mastitis, including uh, mycoplasma bovis using pools of 50 milk samples, is a reliable, a reliable tool. Now, what does this all mean regarding prevention and control? I think it's important to understand that looking at the calf treatment, treatments for respiratory disease with bovis antibiotic treatments is possible, but have in mind, there's a lot of antimicrobial resistance, no beta lactam antibiotics, no cephalosporins, no folic acid, no sulfonamides, no trimethoprime. I think there is some efficiency of tulatromycin, the truxin, uh, 
there is systematic treatment for arthritis and otitis using uh, antiphlogistics. It's all possible, but still, in general, the prognosis of this treatment is pretty poor. Therefore, I think more important part here should be the management and the disease prevention. Also, here you should have in mind there are no efficient vaccines, at least not to my knowledge. There are no approved commercial vaccines. There are some autogenous vaccines of different quality out there. Therefore, in my opinion, the prevention should be, uh, the, the key should be the prevention of infection via uh, milk and colostrum. Here, I think it's crucial to feed colostrum from PCR negative herds only. Another option could be the pasteurization of colostrum, but I think this is difficult and very special expensive equipment uh, needed. And I think another major point here to prevent is the prevention of introduction of M. bovis uh, positive calves uh, with new purchases. Those definitely should be tested before they, uh, they arrive in the herd and are introduced in the herds. And uh, and both as positive cows, uh, they should be separated, uh, they should be removed from the herd or at least should be separated. Looking at the cow, here it's important to understand there is no treatment possible. Not try to treat mycoplasma mastitis since it's mostly to resistant to antibiotics anyway and uh, uh, low, 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 low chances of success. Therefore, here uh, it's also important to break the cycle of infection. So this can be done by monthly testing of lactating cows for mycoplasma. Like I mentioned, bulk milk of 50 samples, which is uh, efficient and is also cost efficient. And in case of a positive bulk milk result, then uh, go and identify the individual positive cows. Those should be slaughtered as soon as possible in order to avoid uh, the shedding. If this is not possible uh, immediately, they should at least be the last in the milking process in order to avoid the contamination and uh, transmission during the milking process. Very crucial, the disinfection of the milk equipment, uh, especially after, uh, after milking those positive cows. And uh, also very important, the separation of calves from the lactating cows. So as mentioned before, regarding diagnostics, the PCR is the method of choice because it allows the detection of the shadows and it's faster and more reliable than culture. And regarding the milk sample of choice, this is definitely the milk sample since it's very easy to collect, especially compared to nasopharyngeal swaps. And pools of milk of up to 50 can be tested. Again, easy and uh, cost efficient. And the testing can be combined with testing for other mastitis causing bacteria. Now, the summary of my talk, M. bovis is causing worldwide problems with significant impact on cattle rearing and milk production. It's a major constraint on intensive dairy production, and it's difficult to eliminate from the herd. Uh, it's characterized by antimicrobial resistance to many of the antibiotics currently used, and uh, there are no eff effective vaccines available. Therefore, really the key is prevention better than cure. It's, it's, it's not just better than cure. It's, in my opinion, the only way to handle this. Um, and there's reliable bactotype mycoplasma PCR solutions available for diagnosis of M. bovis and mycoplasma species from milk, swaps, bronchial lavage, and tissue samples. Again, the monthly testing of bulk milk samples with, the, for example, the HP2 plus will allow an early detection of mycoplasma in the dairy herds and prevent mycoplasma outbreaks and transmissions to calves via the milk. 